I want to thank you guys for joining me today. I'm really excited about my next guest, Kim Peterson. We actually met through Facebook and we got connected by somebody. Um, do you remember who it was, Kim? Not without looking it up. Okay. But I know we were connected, good. <laughs> we were connected by somebody and uh, so glad that we were. We have a lot in common, both being moms and just juggling the whole thing of career and family and needless to say we had a zoom call and it was just phenomenal so i'm glad to have her here today so that she can share some of her insight and words of wisdom as a fellow super mom doing what she's doing during a global pandemic right so i just think that's just like a added icing on the cake to be able to accomplish that in such a time right <laughs> So we are going to give Kim the floor so she can introduce herself before we get into the interview. Yeah. Hi. So I am Kim Peterson. Um, we live out in the middle of nowhere. So hopefully the internet likes me enough for that. But okay. um, we live in a small town in northern Minnesota. I am a mom of two little boys. One of ours, um, our oldest is five and he has autism and we kind of had a, like a hard rough start at the beginning. And then our second is two crazy little boys. And we have like a little homestead, which I didn't research what that entailed before and during it. <laughs> 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 now I realize it was a lot of work and now I'm ready to outsource it, but it was fun while it lasted. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you know, we are here today to just kind of encourage fellow moms and just give them some insight on, yeah, we're in a pandemic. Yeah, we have kids, but we still can move forward in a positive way and really have hope, you know, because it's so hard to be in a bad mood or have fear and doubt and then try to parent at the same time, right? Oh, gosh, yeah. And then adding on for at least um, ourselves, like, we had to revamp our entire, not just our livelihood, but our therapy schedules, our, like, how are we going to pick up equipment? Um, like all of these things that you don't normally think of that were challenging in the beginning. And then um, navigating what IEP would look like at home versus um, doing it in school. And then like, how are we going to speak to his teachers and his therapist like how is that going to work because for a while it was all online it was just like a a whole lot of embracing all of the greats and then not um focusing on the negative right yeah and I love that and I love the fact that we have we both have kids in the background making noise yeah you know, because and I, <laughs> you know we try the tv and you know we just work with it Hey, you know what? It's life without excuses. That's what I say. Because, you know, exactly. it's so funny. A lot of my interviews, my kids are quiet. You know, I can clear a room real quick. I say, hey, you want to say hi on the camera? And they leave. But if it was a selfie or something, they'd be all in front of the camera. So I don't know what the story is on that. But yeah, I invite mine in. They're like, hey, they're just like taking over. It's their new show. So. <laughs> <laughs> which is really funny considering like where we started with with our oldest like he used to be nonverbal, and oh, okay. and like working with his therapist and stuff now he talks exceptionally well and it's almost the point of boundaries where before it was we couldn't get him to talk and now it's like he he talks too much and it's <laughs> compulsive and so it's like okay I hear you now. Can you take a breath? <laughs> hey, that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now, it's just funny. Yeah. Talk to us about, you know, uh, have dealing with autism, you know, because we have yeah, some who so, are struggling with this even now, you know? Um, yeah. Um, it was really difficult um, in the beginning. And I'm sure a lot of the listeners who have gone through this will probably relate in the beginning. I just knew something was off but I couldn't quite understand what, um, at first it was just a lot of sensory needs, um, failure to thrive because he wouldn't eat. It landed, um, he had decreased immune system 
in like a whole slew. So basically for three years, we were in the loop of not knowing what's wrong, but we knew something was wrong. And he needed a feeding tube because he had such a huge oral aversion. He essentially didn't eat for the first two years of his life. Um, and then so that was like a whole new chapter of like, OK, now we're doing therapies because he was in speech, occupational and then physical therapy for milestones. And then we had, you know, surgeries going on that he needed help with um, his lungs and his heart and stuff. And so it was kind of like all this all at once and we just kept being told by specialists well this we're going to give you this diagnosis so he gets services or we're going to do this so that he gets this and it was just like well in a couple of years things will be normal um and it wasn't like really brought to our attention for a long time that like this there wasn't a real normal like it was going to be our normal but it wasn't a normal and so I struggled a lot with that and then struggling because I knew I want, like we worked really hard to have him. We, he, we did a lot of infertility treatments and stuff to have him. And then, so I went through like this feelings of self blame and what did I do? Like, did I do too many medications? Did I not do enough? You know, there's that period. And then there's like period of grief because we prayed for this child for so long and like hoped and we prayed. And then it just didn't, turn out the way that we envisioned because as mom like you envision what this child's life is going to be like and then going through all that it was like mad um like why did this happen and in all that I felt like I lost myself too which is like a whole new level of as a mom we lose ourselves we lose our identity we lose who we were versus who we are now and all of those and and then I was like well now I'm just a special needs mom like I was like I wanted to be more than that and I was angry for a long time and then we had a second child um we weren't trying I was still convincing my husband we should have another <laughs> which was like a whole nother problem in itself because he's like no like this is already a lot and I'm like yeah but he needs a sibling right and um so we had our second child and then I was angry because our second child was quote-unquote normal and um then that went through like anger and now and then like I was like okay now I need to focus on this it's fine well then just pick them up it's not the end of the world the cat dropped some peanuts <laughs> all right not a problem look and I'm yeah. like immune to sounds it's so funny I have some interviews and people are like did you hear that you know how you have that mom uh, yeah hearing? Like no, you just like it's an emergency. Look, that whatever fell, I heard it, but I didn't. It, I didn't even flinch. Yeah, that's the same thing. I was just like, it's going, you know. And then the kids, mom, 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 and I'm like, yeah, I heard it. <laughs> I, <love> it. <laughs> I think it's not the end of the world. <laughs> Get me picked up. Um, but yeah, then I searched. Um, I hired a lot of coaches. Went through lots of therapy. My husband and I went through some therapy, and I realized that. I had to create who's Kim, like what's my identity in all of this mess and how can I make the middle of the mess work? And it, I just felt like I always knew that there was a bigger purpose in my life and, uh, and that like this was happening for us and not to us. And so and the next step was really creating my identity. And then from there, I realized if I could do this and I went through all of this crap and all of this heartache, like I can easily help somebody else. And I just kind of started doing it for fun. <laughs> like wow. a lot of um, my friends nearby, like there's um, some mom communities where like moms with special needs kids will get together and I just ask them questions and help them through like such and such experience or how to organize for doctor's appointments or like meal planning. And I realized like, wow, I'm really great at this. <laughs> That's awesome. And I was like, holy moly. So then, yeah, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take it and run. And now I have the business that I have now working with moms, helping their identity in. And then I specialized more specifically in the special needs area is, and giving back. That is so awesome. And, you know, those overcoming stories are just so inspiring. So talk to us about, do you, do you think your husband kind of went through the same thing? Did you guys talk about that? Were, you know, feeling angry, um, upset as well? Or how was, was it more you than him? 
what happened with that? Um, that's a, such a great question. We actually get that all the time. So it's like, I feel like this needs to be a thing that we speak about because um, at first it was definitely a division. He, yeah, you can have it. Um, he thought like everything was normal. It was going to be fine. And I was like, no, like this is it. And then so at the beginning, he coped through working and he worked exceptionally like no problem sometimes we sleep at the shop kind of thing and i was the one at the hospitals and doing all of this and then it came to like we were living separate lives and i would get really mad because he would try he would try to say like do we really need to do this or what do you really think about this i'm like well the doctor said so that's what we're doing and like i would completely cut him off and so it it definitely drove a wedge between our our family and our marriage through that. And before we had our son, we were together seven years, we're high school sweethearts. And so like, we felt like we knew each other so well, like we had so like, we'd gone through so many things and still like that there was reason for division. And when we realized that in um, our therapy and like, I was, I was choosing to blame him because it was too hard to accept reality and in me choosing to blame him he stepped away because he didn't want to be blamed like nobody wants to be your punching bag for years right but he still loved me and he didn't want to like completely step away you know and so and I know like a lot in our community anyways um we've heard a lot of like parents splitting or you know dad's not being supportive and it's like well why you know like that's the new layer of like why why the separation and i really think it's because the process i turned into super mom and he was like hold up i didn't sign up for this (laughs) like and i was just like i can do all of the things i don't need you and that was like another thing of like you know, not leaning on my husband and not expecting things from him, I then started saying, well, I don't need you. I don't, you know, and that was very me centered and not heart centered. I love that. And, um, you know, that is just reality. Now, other people can have that even with, you know, right now they're trying to reinvent themselves. You know, maybe the husband Mm -hmm. was the breadwinner. Now the wife is working online, making all kind of money and his job is gone, you know? So mm-hmm. that dynamic of whatever we think we're supposed to be doing, things are changing. I mean, they're getting tossed to and fro. So I love that. The thing I also I love is yeah. that whole thing about you chose to even say that, recognizing that it was a choice what you were doing. So explain that to the viewers about the choice because that was a golden nugget. And I want to make sure that everybody gets that. <laughs> yeah. I, it's always so funny when I tell our story, because I'm like, well, everyone thinks like that. And then really come to find out, no, Kim, like not everybody thinks of things as a blessing. Hey, Drew, will you move the dog, please? Um, dog. <laughs> we have a puppy, we have a golden retriever puppy. And when we don't give her attention, it's kind of the end of the world. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> yeah. So um, as far as that goes, we really spoke about um, like the choice that we have. So for me, I knew like I knew what I was doing. I was just in shame to admit it to him. Um, like when I would do things like I choose to blame him for working because I was tired, like he had to work because yes, I was working full time, but my full time money was going to pay medical bills. And, you know, like he had to support us off or off of that. And I would choose like, instead of saying like, thank you so much. I would, I remember like vividly thinking, yeah, he might be working, but like I'm doing X, Y, Z. And so it was a choice to say, well, you should have been home or you should have been at this doctor's appointment. Well, in reality, if he was to miss every, like, if he was to come to every appointment or every hospital visit, I mean, we would probably live in a box somewhere because, (laughs) you know, like, 
right it was just so much and so it was that expectation but like really I remember vividly thinking like yeah I'm doing all of this like how dare you and I think that's just um a mindset shift that needs to happen yeah. too in really just thinking and that can even be as simple as this like you like you said the spouse is working like my husband's working late hours lately as well and I can choose to really sit in my values of how I want to be treated and leave that onto him I can I can you know continue making him breakfast or setting him up for success for his day or I can grow bitter and say well you're working on here with the kids working my side business and you know like I can be sassy about it and I mean I'm not gonna lie I'm not perfect all the time right. but a majority of the time I can wake up and take care of myself and pour into him at the same time right I, I yeah. love that yeah and I think um you know it and it's so funny because when we talk about I'm doing all this with the kids you know, I use the kids, uh, I talk to my kids about this because they'll do their chore and they'll be like, well, I did this, mom, I did that. And I said, well, you know what? That's what you're supposed to do. Tell me something extra, right? <laughs> so I'm thinking that's the same thing I could say about myself. I'm the mom. Okay, well, who else is going to do it if I'm dealing with some children that can't take care of themselves, right? Exactly, so, yeah. <laughs> I want to sit here and toot my own horn, right? Yeah, like I think that just goes to when we take our focus off of who we're serving and right. put it back on ourselves, we can do things like that that don't give purpose because we're like, well, I watched kids for all day. I worked my business. I took care of a dog that doesn't be quiet. You know, like I could go on and on about everything I did. And I'm like, well, you just worked. Now what? <laughs> right. You know, right. but then if I'm sitting here thinking, oh, okay. Like I, I know, like I made you breakfast this morning. Wasn't that amazing? Like, did you love that love note I put in your lunchbox? So like, was that a great surprise? And I'd be like, see, I did this. So you can go pick me a couple of flowers out in the yard. You know? <laughs> yeah, so it's just like, what did I do for you? Right, right. Yeah. That comparison thing, you know, yeah. it really, it, it can get you in trouble. So I love that. Yeah, the transparency, you know, and I think it's so good to just realize that, you know, that there was this thing that said, you know, why are you complaining when you, this is something you prayed about? right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the same thing. We want to be moms. You know, we're pregnant. We want healthy babies. And then they come and then we're complaining, you know, yes. or whatever. So yeah. yeah, we really should be really taking a dose of our own medicine. <laughs> and I think that is one so thing, good. Mm -hmm. when it gets stuck in that comparison, I know in a lot of um, the moms that I work with and, mm -hmm. you know, we're already working with um, a new sense of reality and grieving that and right. working through that transition but there's still an, like any mom there's a level of grievance you have to grieve the life that you had before the first child before the second child and so many more you know like you have to grieve the what was or the what now can mean something and when you create that and you establish in yourself like and these are the values in which I want to instill these and you, it can't be a lot like it's it's unrealistic for us to sit here and give ourselves a list of 10 things that we're going to value every single day because when we do that we put ourselves on the checklist like was I grateful for today did I make myself a nutritious shake did I drink enough water did I exercise you know like when we put ourselves on that checklist then we take away the importance of who we are. And I think like that is a struggle point for all of us in this time of we're, we're grieving what was. And I, now we need to think of who we are now and instill just a couple of core values. So for me, it's like quality time. Like I will spend a very vivid 10 to 15 minutes with each child today. That's obtainable. That's something that's gonna make us both feel good. That's going to grow our relationship for the future that I want. 
But right now I can't focus on that future. I have to focus on that 10 to 15 minutes. That is so good. And you know, an idea just came to me while you were talking is that, you know, we always measure our children by other people's children, you know, that comparison thing. And, you know, when we're dealing, I'm spiritual. So I just feel like, you know, everything happens for a reason. Nothing's by accident. And when children are born the way they are, we are the ones that say something's not right something is, you know, a little off and it could be no different than um, one child being a visual learner and one being a tactile learner or one that, you know, you have to be verbal with. So we accept some of those differences. And then sometimes we don't do that like we should, but those are things that we accept, but then it's like, you know what, that's just who they are. So if we accept that, life is so much easier because then we can communicate in a way that serves them rather than trying to make them a square peg in a round hole exactly. or whatever yeah. that is, if I said it right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, I really get it. And that's exactly what it is. Like who's to say, like um, one of our moms, in our community she um also touches on the special needs community and does like a lot more of like occupational therapy stuff and she said what if autism is always has always been the normal but we became detached from it i'm like what an amazing perspective so because, true you know like what if like that was the normal but we chose not to you so know true. like it's just I'm like yes, like that. And that now back that's on that comparison. That is so true, and I mean, like I have two daughters that are left-handed, and mm -hmm. I'm right-handed, right? So everybody else is right-handed except for these two, and you know, it wasn't until I did an interview with um, someone that I just had that realization that even that has a different perspective. You know, you exactly, don't pay attention yeah. to where they have to sit because it's more comfortable because they're left-handed. If you're right-handed, you just have this perception that this is how it's supposed to be. And they're always trying to compensate and adjust. And we don't feel that, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, our oldest is also left-handed. It's been a learning curve. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like I got him um some cool, like um, I got him a guitar and then I realized like it was for right-handed people. So then we like kind of switched that and then um, teaching him how to write because he's five so like teaching him how to write I'm like how how do I do that I watched a lot of YouTube videos lately <laughs> or you know what sit in front of them opposite <laughs> yeah because it's like a that mirror makes sense. You see what I'm saying? I love that yeah yeah that's how you so do I'm it like, girl <laughs> it's like oh gosh like this is <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like, this crazy is so different yeah or mm -hmm. teaching him I remember trying to teach him like how to eat um he used to have like a plate and it was like in a it was color coded and it was circular mm -hmm. well you put like a new thing in each one like a new food group in each color and mm -hmm. so I was teaching him how to do it you know clockwise and I was like well this is rather he's like dipping like you know he's like spilling the plate all the time like getting frustrated I'm like well that would be why because it's not like you know like we go counterclockwise if we're right-handed <laughs> And I'm here right. making him go clockwise. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I Look, yeah. I'm glad I only have two that are left-handed, right? I'm because... glad I only have one thus, thus far. <laughs> but one could be enough, right? I'm telling uh -huh. you because you just don't think about those things when you're busy doing you, you know, mm -hmm. being who you are. Exactly. So it's another reminder about perspective. So, you know, I appreciate God about that. But yeah, my last one is um, left-handed. So she's the youngest. And so it reminds me that, hey, you know, you always have to think about another perspective. So mm -hmm. that is great. And I also always think like every time um, our oldest will have like um, an apprehensive to something. So he hates wet grass. Like Mm -hmm. or if his clothes are wet like it's the end of the world mm -hmm. and usually that always happens when I'm rushing him like come on let's go let's go we gotta go and then he'll 
you know, spill something on a shirt and then it's the end of the world. We have to take time for the meltdown and then we have to take time to get them to change. And, you know, and it's like, thank you, God, for giving me this time to slow down. Like, I see you. Like, thank you. Yeah. You know, because we, we can get in our own way. This is true. So this conversation <laughs> has been great. Um, yeah. Tell everybody how they get a hold of you. Yeah, so you can follow me on Instagram at Kim Peterson dot CEU or CEO. So that's the best way. Um, right now we're in the pivotal moment of translating everything into more integrated and more support through community. So there's some new exciting things coming our way. Awesome. And yeah. what final words would you share with everybody? Um, my final words would be to grieve the moments that you had lost and to really sit in that quiet and take into perspective your core values. Just create two out of three where you can feel accomplishment every day that you you met those three things every day. Awesome. That is so good. Well, we just want to thank you so much for your wise words and your vulnerability really appreciate you sharing your story and so glad that we connected this has just been a lot of fun we're gonna have to definitely have another it is uh, fun <laughs> have another uh yeah. take two because this is fun next yeah. time we'll have to have the kids on you know we got to get a little ready for that yeah right <laughs> be all kinds of party yes let them come so that has just been amazing so i want to thank you guys for watching and i encourage you to reach out to kim uh she's got some great insight and just so much wisdom about what she's experienced in her own life and uh we're just all here to help like she said we're all in this together so this is just amazing yes. to be able to come together and support one another during some challenging times and know that you're not alone right you're not you're alone, not alone. and nobody's judging you right <laughs> no do not compare yourself just don't do it absolutely <laughs> So thanks again, guys, for watching, and we will see you all the next time.